So today I'm going to be going over some FIFA 19 news and it's basically going to be about the big news surrounding Ultimate Team and the whole loot boxes scandal and we're also going to be talking about cross-platform play news for FIFA 19 so stay tuned. And of course, this is another episode of Vapex News, and Vapex News is your number one source for all things FIFA 19. So if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button today and the notification bell, and you won't be disappointed. Now, today's news is coming from Eurogamer's website. I do my best to always pick reliable sources when I do Vapex News, and I think Eurogamer is one of those reliable sources. But if some things seem incorrect, it is not my fault. I haven't done any background research on this sort of stuff that they are putting on their website. So... I will put the article link in the description, you can go and read it for yourself as well. So the first bit of news from Eurogamer is about FIFA 19 Ultimate Team. They basically say that they've spoken to the EA Sports Vice President and COO Daryl Holt at the Game Lab conference in Spain and he has told them that FIFA 19 Ultimate Team packs uh, are now going to be showing the odds of each pack. So when you go and buy a gold pack it's going to have more information and uh, they haven't actually showed any footage of it, so I can't really tell you what it's going to have. But these are the exact words that he told Eurogamer. For Ultimate Team, when you buy a pack, you know what you are getting. You are getting a certain number of assets that are guaranteed, and we're now going to start to do the pack odd disclosures that will show you the odds of what you might get in each pack. That will be in our product year 19 titles, so maybe even Madden 19 and stuff will get this same thing. So at least that aspect of understanding what the chances are of getting X, Y or Z card will be present now. Now that was all that Daryl said at the moment about the situation and Daryl did not go into too much detail on exactly how EA are going to implement this in FIFA 19 and he didn't say anything about what actual pack items EA will disclose but what we're going to do now is take a look at what the current thing looks like in FIFA 18 and make a guess as to what they could tell us in FIFA 19 when they decide to disclose some pack luck stuff. So on the screen here is the pack store for FIFA 18 Ultimate Team. You've probably seen it a thousand times if you are a Ultimate Team player. For me, this is like the first time I've seen it because I haven't actually touched Ultimate Team until I had to check this today, which is pretty cool. Um, you can see my record, it's all zeros. My coins are zeros. My FIFA points are zeros. So you know that I haven't touched this all year. I haven't even redeemed my pre-order codes. I think they're not even valid anymore. So that's a bit of uh, a shame. I was going to give them out, but they're not valid. Um, but yeah, let's go onto this screen. You can see that the only information we get from this is that there are 12 items, 10 golds, and three rares and that is if you were to buy a premium gold pack obviously it changes if you're spending less coins on different packs and stuff so the items are obviously mixed between players and consumables they're not all players and they do tell you that on the description of the pack but i think overall as you can see on the screen there's not much information to go by and i think that's a very bad indication of telling players what they could get if they buy this pack and usually when you buy these kinds of packs, you do get more consumables than players. And half the time, or even most of the time, you don't even make your money back when you buy these packs. You might get like 2,000 coins worth of value in a 7,500 coin pack, which is not very good. So hopefully these new disclosure laws or things that EA are going to do are going to help players know what they're going to get with these kinds of packs. My only guess at the moment on what EA could possibly disclose would be maybe the odds of getting players above a certain rating or the odds of actually getting player cards in a pack but I really don't know what EA are going to do because I mean there's a lot of different ways they could disclose this sort of stuff if you have any ideas on what they should disclose leave a comment down below and we can interact in the comment section now for those people who don't play PEZ I will tell you what PEZ actually does because they actually do an alright job at disclosing what you can get out of a pack. Well, not really a pack. They have their own little ball spins and you can only get one player. There's no consumables and stuff. But if you take a look at the agents, you can see that there is a Worldwide Stars Volume 3 agent that I'm going to be showing you as an example today. And you can see the rarity level. They work with black balls and gold balls and all the other ones going down. It's just based on overall. So the higher the overall, the color of the ball will change. And you can see that it tells you how many players in this little spin are going to be level 30 black ball or gold ball and silver ball and stuff like that. And it even gives you a percentage on the right side of the, of the number of the players to let you know how much percentage of the whole spin is going to be black balls or gold balls and stuff like that. The things that I'm not sure with this Pez ball spinning stuff is if the player that I'm going to get is already predetermined before I open the pack and if the visuals of the ball spinning is just a gimmick to get you hooked like any casino uh, game, you know how they got the poker machines and stuff. It's just to get you hooked on it with the bright colors and the music and stuff. So 
I think the spinning animations are really useless because I do think the ball is predetermined after you pay for the ball. But you can see that I got pretty lucky. My first spin was Cavani. He was a black ball, so a very good pull. And the second spin was the, the next spin, but it was a different agent. I used the Spanish Stars agent. You can see I had a 30% chance of getting a black ball. So it wasn't a bad agent. I paid with the GP, and then it goes into the animation. I don't know if that's when the game determines what player I'm going to get. And then this part here is just all a little game to get you hooked and keep you spinning. But you can see that all the different balls are there. You can see a, a visual representation of your pack luck, you know, your 30% of black balls and stuff. It's all there, but they're not spaced equally. And you can see that the game held the silver balls for a long time to give me that black ball. So, uh, yeah, I guess I got lucky again. Second spin in a row, it gave me Diego Costa. So not bad there. I was pretty surprised when I was doing it myself as well. The problem is I think Pez is changing the spins model and I think they're going for packs now like FIFA 18 and 19 is going to have. But let's compare the two, FIFA 18 versus Pez 18. FIFA 18 has a very bland description. There's not much to go by there. And at least Pez told you the amount of players in the pack or in the spin, sorry, and the success chance of it as well and the different rarity levels with the, the black balls and the gold balls and stuff like that. So you have to give credit to Pez for showing a bit more disclosure than EA. But let's see what EA choose to do for FIFA 19. Hopefully they can give a lot more detail like Pez did already. And let's see what Pez is going to disclose now because they're going to a pack model now as well, I think. So it'll be interesting to see. So to close up this information presented in the first part of the video, Leave a comment, let me know if this is a good thing for you. Are you happy with the news today about disclosing pack luck? For me personally, it doesn't worry me because I don't play Ultimate Team. But I think in general, and me being a part of the gaming community, I would like to see pack luck being disclosed in every game. I always think it's a good thing. Uh, but obviously, we need to see how exactly EA is going to do this. So it's hard to criticize it, and it's hard to praise it at the moment until we actually see what they do. And we have seen over the last few years controversial tactics used by companies to try and milk cash out of their customers. And EA had their big thing last year with the Star Wars game as well. It's obviously a little different between Star Wars and FIFA because Ultimate Team is just a separate game mode. And you can choose to play it and you can choose to purchase uh, packs and stuff like that. So Star Wars, I think the whole loot box thing was integrated into the whole game. At least in FIFA you can play career mode and you're not hit with loot boxes. Not yet anyway. But um... Yeah, I think EA are trying to manage their reputation a little bit better when it comes to this stuff. We've seen them take out season passes, I think, for Battlefield 5. And I think they're trying to uh, just increase their reputation again after the shambles of the Star Wars thing last year. I want to move on now to the next bit of news by Eurogamer. And this news is about cross-platform play in FIFA 19. Now, currently, FIFA does not let you do cross-platform stuff. But at E3, Eurogamer managed to ask... FIFA Creative Director Matt Pryor if EA Sports have looked into cross-platform play for FIFA 19. Now, Matt Pryor, in response, said that it is something that they have looked and talked about, but currently there are a lot of issues to work through with various first parties. So that's the excuse about why they can't do it. And he also said that they will continue to monitor and see, and he thinks that if it does happen, it will be a big benefit to all users. And that's all that he had to say about that, so don't expect it to be in FIFA 19. Maybe it's going to take a few more years before we start seeing it in FIFA games. But I think Fortnite have tried it. Uh, I don't know if you can do it on Nintendo Switch and Xbox at the moment. I think Sony has issues with it. But don't quote me on this. I don't play a lot of games. I haven't even played Fortnite. I'm just basically a, a FIFA guy, to be honest. I don't have time for anything else. But, yeah, I think eventually if they do put it in a FIFA game, you can play Ultimate Team from your PS4, then if you want to use the same account, you can go on your Nintendo Switch, play Ultimate Team there, it's the same account, the same records, same players and stuff. Then if you want to hop on your Xbox, you can do the same thing there as well. So that it's pretty good for a certain few people that have all different kinds of consoles going around the house. And yeah, it's basically good if you have a portable console and a home console. So a Switch and a PS4 or something like that. And of course, it's also good if you want to do 1v1s with your friends who have different kinds of consoles. So if you want to verse a guy who's playing on the PS4, you have an Xbox, you would be able to have a match there rather than just be console locked when you want to play with your friends. So there's also that benefit as well. Anyway, those were the two news articles that recently surfaced about FIFA 19. So I do try and cover these stuff as I see them. And I always cover what's interesting, what's pretty much confirmed news, what's really good rumors as well. As long as they have good evidence behind them, I will cover them. And I think these two were good things to know about FIFA 19 uh, at the moment. 
And remember that Vapex News does try and cover everything you need to know about FIFA 19. So if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button today and the notification bell. And you won't miss anything and you won't be disappointed as well. So thank you to those who have bought my career mode transfer guide. If you haven't got it yet, it's only five bucks and the link is in the description. It's going to enhance the way you do transfers in career mode. And I've recently updated it with chapter 60, which is the new real faces added with the World Cup update. So it's going to tell you potentials and stuff like that. Really good value at a very cheap price. And I've also got a new sponsor for the month called scdkey.com. You can buy game key software keys. Use my coupon codes for 3% off games and 10% off uh, software. Make sure you use the codes because it lets them know that you came from me and it helps me get further sponsorship opportunities in the future. If you want to watch another video, tap the thumbnail on your screen right now. If you want to subscribe to the channel, tap the VK icon underneath the thumbnail and I'll see you next time.